for for this show being the second anniversary. I didn't know how to approach this show because like I didn't read my horoscope today, and like, like even if I read it, it just would have been like, oh hey, you're dumb, stop reading this or whatever. But like, but like I need that kind of guidance and wisdom in my life, you know what I mean? Because I'm not friends with Morgan Freeman, so. Yeah, he just has all the. In and by the way, if, if like Morgan Freeman's like weird reference, just pretend I'm like I'm talking about the Snapple lady, okay? And we'll get this going. But anybody here ever been at a restaurant? You're eating with your like maybe a couple of friends or something, and then they leave early, right? And then but they leave a really shitty tip, and then the waitress comes up to the table, gives you that judgmental look, like you know, like you fucked up or something. Like you're like no, 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 no. Like that's not. I'm not like that. Like I'm not. I'm the, like, I'm not like that. Like, I, it's the exact same reaction you have when your racist uncle says something really inappropriate in public, you know? It's like, oh, no, 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 he, like, I'm not racist, I'm not like him, but like, no, he's only my half-uncle. Listen, listen, I loved Hotel Rwanda. Wait, no, 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 I didn't love Hotel Rwanda, I just loved what was in it. No, no, wait, like, I didn't love, I didn't love what, it just, it made me feel sad for things, and so, I promise I didn't laugh at the blooper reel, right? <laughs> I just, uh, I recently signed a new lease on an apartment with my girlfriend, and, uh, no. <laughs> Don't ever do that. Ever. Like, it, I kind of feel like we just extended our contract agreement, you know? Like, the same way you do with cell phones. Because, like, if we break up, we gotta split our stuff, but now there's cancellation fees, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, even, especially if she wants to upgrade, you know, that's gonna cost her money, too. You know, some girls just want to spend a little extra for a bigger touch screen, you know? I can't blame her. Verizon's in on that shit. <laughs> I think it's weird that I know who my girlfriend's favorite male porn star is. is that, that's a little awkward, right? Because, like, you're watching the thing, and then you'll just pop in the screen. I'm like, oh, hey, it's the guy with the thing. With the... And it's not like I'm jealous of him. I don't want to look like him or anything, because he looks like Kirk Cameron from Growing Pains. And that's... <laughs> I don't want to look like Kirk Cameron from Girl. I want to look like me, you know, just just with his penis and his mad, awesome body waxing skills. Like, guy's really good. But it's like, but like, what I want to know is that like, he'll you'll see something that's just like he'll do something like really like crazy, right? I'm just like, fuck, is that what my girlfriend's into? Like, shit. There's no way I'm doing that without proper workman's comp papers. You know, like I got shit to do tomorrow. But that's what I don't get about porn, though. It's like, why? Like, it keeps getting kinkier and kinkier, like, the more it goes. It's like, I don't know. I, and, like, I wonder how far it's going to go. Because at all times, you're just one Google search away from, like, the kinkiest, most taboo shit you've ever seen in your life. Like, you're just searching for stuff, and then you just stumble on, like, oh, people as penguins, dressing as, like, dressed as penguins, but they're fisting each other. I'm just like, oh, I didn't know I was into that. That's weird. Apparently, they call it ice fishing. And they... <laughs> And then, like, it, it, what I want to, I want to know if it, like, what if it just comes full circle, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, everybody's done every kinky thing that is possible, so your girl just comes home one night, and she's like, hey, hey, listen, we're going to try something really nasty tonight. I'm like, yeah, what's that? She's like, eye contact. <laughs> Whoa, you nasty bitch. <laughs> like, like, pillow talk porn becomes a thing, and then they just... Make, they just make sex tapes of people like furniture shopping at Ikea or something, you know? God. I'm gonna say this last thing, uh, just because I feel like saying it tonight, and uh, I'm hosting, so I'm gonna do whatever I want. By the way, drink a lot tonight, because this shit's gonna be awesome the drunker you get, as a wise man once said. I think, can we agree, it's, it's, it's customary not to make eye contact with somebody when you see them get out of the stall in the bathroom. Is that fair? You know? Because, like, do you need to look into my eye to see if I have any remorse for what I just did in there? No, you don't, because I don't have any. But what happens when you have to, you know? It happened to me once. I saw this old guy struggling to get out of the stall, you know? I go, like, he had his pants on, so it wasn't weird, but it just smelled like he just shit out an Asian fish market. So, like... And I go up to him, but like as like as I'm going to help him, it's like his eyes were just giving me this look. Yeah, There's just like this this look of need, you know what I mean? It's, it's like his eyes were speaking to me. His eyes were saying, "What are you doing in here?" My eyes are like, "Well, I'm here to help you." And his eyes are like, "Well, I haven't gone yet." My eyes are like, "Then what's that smell?" And his eyes are like, "Well, we're next door to an Asian fish market." My eyes are like, "Well, that makes sense." Oh, hey, we get into later, buddy. And his eyes are like, "Well, I was going to go to the Asian fish market, but I don't know what I want to get." My eyes are like, "Do you enjoy halibut?" And his eyes are like, hell, but what's that? My eyes are like, it's a flaky white fish.
But the, the whole time his mouth was actually saying, let go of me! <laughs> yeah, that's how I wanted to start the show off. You're welcome, America. You guys ready to get this show started? There's gonna actually be funny people on the show, I promise you. And coming up to the stage is one of them. He runs the 955 open mic and comedy show. Uh, God damn it, I love this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Ray Bullet. Uh, your next comic, regular here, love this guy. He's performing at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for F. Scott Horner. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One year ago tonight was the first time I'd ever performed here. Six weeks before that, I was performing in Edinburgh. Good God, how I've fallen. Um, actually, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to say thank you very much to Jesse Jarvis for providing such an amazing night. Um, keep it going strong, folks. Um, also, keep drinking, because the more you drink, the funnier I get. Um, but uh, speaking of coming uh, from Scotland, uh, actually, a year ago, almost to the day, I, I was living in uh, Glasgow, Scotland, and I was getting my uh, Master of Fine Arts, and it was pretty impressive because, well, over there, I learned a lot of amazing things. I learned that they have something that I like to call religious tolerance. When they're at a bar and they disagree about somebody's religion, rather than glassing an entire country, they just glass each other. Um, <laughs> Thank you for people who get that joke. Um, the other thing is, is that when I was over there, I started to learn that there were words that I'd never heard before. Um, words that I'd rarely ever heard. Uh, when I first got over there, I landed, I got off the plane, and I got onto the bus, and I heard it come from a grandmother to her granddaughter. It was the C word, ladies and gentlemen. I heard it on the bus. I heard it from a pastor. I saw it plastered on billboard signs. The C word, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure you all know it. Chlamydia, the glass reaching goddess of love. Um, but yeah, uh, just trying some old material just because it is one of those kind of nights. Um, bear with me while I wrestle with the mic stand. Um, 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 sorry, uh, I swear I will fix it. Um, there, I'll just hold it like that for the rest of the night. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing though is once I got back, um, I ended up having to deal with street pastors. And one of the things that they always ended up doing to me is they always ended up coming up to me and asking me questions. One of the big ones was, Sir, have you heard the word of God today? No, because I have taken my medication. The other one was, Son, did you know the Jews killed Jesus? No, here I always thought it was a minimum wage centurion who was handy with the hammer. Um, another one that ends up happening is um, on my way to work every day, I end up seeing these platitudes at, um, on the uh, church that's right behind my house, and one of them read, Weather Report. The sun shall shine forever. Now, that's not really that funny until you start thinking about it the way I did, which ended up coming out this way. Bear with me while I try to wrestle with this thing again. I'm really sorry that I broke this. Um, what ended up happening in my head was not that the sun shall shine forever, but what came into my head was show tunes. The sun will come out tomorrow. Um, then it actually ended up leading me to think of movie titles that could go along with this. Um, Jesus, Queen of the Desert. Um, Another one that made me think was, I, I started looking into uh, words that were in the Bible, things that were in the Bible, and one of the things that I had to ask myself a question about was, we all know the last words of Jesus, Father, why have you forsaken me? And I had to ask the question, what, how would those have changed had Jesus been a masochist? And I think they probably would have gone something like this. Nail me! Nail me hard! Um, so yeah, um, but... Uh, speaking of nailing, I come from a very interesting family. Um, one of the biggest things that I ended up having to deal with when I was younger was a grandfather that perpetually asked me this question. So, have you declared yet? He was asking about my sexuality. Now, this isn't such a problem until you have that happen in an ER where, you're, uh, where you've just hit your head. He asks you, and everybody else in the room has knife and gunshot wounds. Yeah, that's really awkward. So, have you declared? Why are you asking me this right now? Oh, God. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, 
that, that was always interesting growing up with him. Um, granted, he ended up visiting me in Scotland, and one of the biggest things that ended up happening was he ended up talking to all of my female friends, and he said, you know, um, and he's a psychiatrist, so he knows all of this, you know, if you're going to be experimenting a lot, one of the biggest things I have to tell you is if you're going to be experimenting, you should at least be earning money doing it. Um, so, thanks a lot, Granddad, for making it even harder for me to be able to get laid with my friends. Um, telling them to sell themselves. Crap. Uh, but yeah, uh, one of the last things, though, is I grew up being an amazingly big geek. And one of the biggest things when I moved off to college is um, my parents said, Scott, you can buy anything you want. So I ended up going to Target and I ended up buying every last bit of Spider-Man paraphernalia I could go into the... Um, building with me, I ended up buying the Spider-Man eatery kit, I ended up buying the Spider-Man pajamas, and I ended up buying the Spider-Man blanket that covered everything, including my virginity, till I was 21. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for supporting live comedy. Before I get going, I want you to thank Jesse Jarvis, and one last thing, I want you to know, suicide is not a joke, it's a punchline. Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Scott Horner, everybody. God damn me, Saul. Jesus Christ. Uh, God, you know, I might as well leave it up to your next comic's also really tall. Uh, he'll also be headlining the 955 show Laughing Gaily, which is the first uh, which is the first show ever in Richmond to just feature only gay, lesbian, and bisexual comics. So give it up for him for, for breaking the envelope. I don't know if you can break one of those. We'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, Tony Chapman! Thanks for fucking out of me, Jesse Jarvis. <laughs> These people didn't know I was gay. We do now! Yeah. So we'll just jump right into it, shall we? <laughs> um, well, uh, I found out recently that a really popular internet uh, gay porn guy was in Richmond. Um, so I went to his glory hole. And I think that was my first time going. It was a really interesting experience. One, because I'm six foot five, so I could actually see over top of the glory hole. So instead of like a glory hole experience, it felt like I was Wilson from Home Improvement. <laughs> and Tim Allen was sucking my penis. <laughs> While I gave him valuable life lessons. <laughs> Mostly how to get a good blowjob. Or give a good blowjob, excuse me. Which obviously didn't work because he's still doing sitcom television. <sighs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I read an article recently, and it was talking about priests. Uh, there was a priest who said that less attention should be paid on the priest that possibly molested the child, and more attention should be paid on the child for possibly seducing the priest. Here you have an innocent child and you have a 50 to 60 year old man who has taken a vow of celibacy and you want to question the child over this. <sighs> yeah. There was, there was definitely more than a joke. I'm just drawing a blank right now. <laughs> I've had way too much to drink. <sighs> um, there's a gay app on your phone called, well, I don't know who's phone. Maybe. <laughs> there's a gay app on, it's called Grinder. And uh, Grinder to me is like a gay Pokedex. <laughs> and for those who get it, Pokedex is from Pokemon. So pretty much Grinder is a location app. You, you walk around and see how many gay people are around you. And I liken it to Pokedex because I mean, you see really, really weird people. And also, um, there's like a really nice catch line to it. It's, it's called uh, STDs, gotta catch them all. <laughs> yeah. AIDS is like the big one. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta catch AIDS. Oh, you gotta catch AIDS. Um, I was trying not to do this, damn it. This is like a lot of new material, I'm sorry. But yeah, Grindr, like, I don't, I don't like it because I, I feel like the name itself is offensive. Like, you have gay guys who just want to name the gay app Grinder. So I was like, what else could it be named? So I thought of it myself. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take over and I'm going to change the name. And um, Fister is what I would call it. <laughs> I think that's more appropriate. 
Um, I had a conversation with my sister recently, and I just, I recently just broke up with my boyfriend. So yeah, we were, yeah. Yeah, my dad didn't like him anyway, because he was white, and my dad is a, a, a former Black Panther, and I'm a Pink Panther. So, I didn't necessarily like it, but um, I always explain to him that, I mean, don't see it as me dating a white man, see it as me fucking the white man for 400 years of slavery. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for that. Did I just like alienate a whole portion of the room? I think I did. I think I scared every single white guy in the room. What's up? But yeah, so me and my sister had this conversation. It was like, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna get a gay guy, you need to start dressing the part. You need to start like dressing like wearing skinny jeans and wearing like tighter clothing and be like let make sure gay guys know who you are. But I don't really I'm not really attracted to flamers, uh, which is why I wear flame retarded clothing. <laughs> Just keeps them away from me. I don't, you know, they're really dangerous, actually. They, they go around burning stuff. And I'm talking about gonorrhea. I'm not talking about like burn, actually burning people. But, but I did have a relationship. So they just came from my dungeon. They just got out. Um, I did. Uh, I had a relationship with a girl like in college and high school. And one thing she really liked, she really liked cunnilingus. Like <laughs> she really liked that. So I was like. Okay, I guess if I have to do anything, I'll do that. So, I mean, we started doing it, and it was like, it just, I mean, it was, it was a rough experience. I mean, I'm just like down there, and it's just like looking at me like, ah, hey, and I'm just like, I'm scared, and I just start crying. I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. <sighs> I'm reliving it, okay. But yeah, I was like, oh my God. And so I went to my therapist, and I, I, I tried to ascertain, I tried to figure out exactly what was going on. Um, turns out he said it was because I'm an emotional eater. <laughs> and that's why I cried in the front of the <laughs> um, I was at a black gay pride rally recently in DC. Um, black gay pride. It's pretty annoying because you're either always pissed off about something, black, or you're either pissed on about something, gay. And at this rally, they were like, we want, we want gay rights. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, we want the same thing as everybody else. And I was like, fuck yeah. And that's when I noticed the crowd grew silent and exponentially more raunchy. Uh, that's when I realized that the black power fist means something completely different out of black gay pride rock. <laughs> right in there. <laughs> but it's amazing what gay guys are putting their asses these days, right? <laughs> Am I right, striped shirt in the back? <laughs> he knows, that's why he's laughing. Take a sip of your beer, sir. But yeah, first gerbils, then fists, now Chick-fil-A sandwiches. In protest, of course, guys, in protest. But of course, Chick-fil-A decided to count this by coming out with a couple of sandwiches of their own. Uh, the first one is the flame broiled sandwich. And it's not what you think. The sandwich is actually made over a flame pit that is fueled by the corpses of dead homosexuals. And the second one, it's, it's not as popular. It's called the tossed chicken salad sandwich. Yeah, pretty much you're eating that out of some guy's ass anyway. It's a pretty shitty sandwich. But that's been my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. I'm Tony. Tony Chapman, everybody. Oh, motherfucker. All right, so your next guy. This is his first time here at McCormick, so let him feel welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Smith. Thank <laughs> you.